everyone. Remember when computers used to weigh a ton? Remember when we had the boombox, the Walkman, and now the iPod? But yes, technology just seems to be keep getting smaller, and cheaper, and more portable. But is it always going to be that way? I mean, over the past few decades, we've been shrinking our silicon transistors all the way down. But there's going to be a limit. We are at a crossroads, everyone. Eventually, there's, we're going to reach a point where we can't keep shrinking that silicon anymore. And with our growing technology demands, how can we make better iPods? We're doomed, everyone. We're doomed. No, we will not. We have a solution. What solution is this? Molecular electronics. Is that the magical technology you've been working on? Yes, it is. With his technology, we can eventually reduce this limit all the way down. Isn't that right? It is correct. So give it up for Mark Lai, the, the science, science guy. guy. Mark Lai. The science guy. Mark Lai. The science guy. Before we continue on our voyage of molecular electronics, let's talk about what it is. Molecular electronics is the usage of organic molecules in the conductance of electrons instead of metals or metalloids. So why do we need molecular electronics? What we've been doing with our current technology is Instead, we've been shrinking it down. We've been going from large transistors to small transistors, but there's a limit. With molecular electronics, we start with the smallest possible molecule and build up. And this gives us a lot of potential. 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 Say it with me, Julian. Check out the surrounding. It's filled with organic molecules. Now, imagine if your electronics can be made out of this stuff. Grass. Whoa. Well, not exactly grass, but uh, the DNA and carbon components in the grass. There are tons of molecules that can represent uh, the transistors, resistors, conductors of today's technology. But we're just going to cover two. DNA and nanotubes. DNA storing data and nanotubes conducting electrons. By rolling up pieces of graphite, we can form tubes like these. These carbon nanotubes act like, as conductors for electrons, taking the place of modern wires. There are billions of car uh, carbon atoms in here, Whoa. but this creates a good imagery. Electrons like these can pass through these nanotubes by the sp2 bonds bonding the carbons together. Electrons, go! Uh, Mark, I think you're having too much fun. Shut up, it's physics! DNA is a, uh, is a natural molecule used to store data. It's used in my body, so why can't we use it for electronics? Uh, the nitrogen bases form rungs like these, and they can be interpreted into a code similar to the binary code, going one, zero, zero, one, zero. So, using DNA, we can store a massive amounts of data in a relatively really small amount of space. Did you know? The DNA in an average human cell can store 10 gigabytes of digital data. A strand of a single layered carbon nanotube weighing a pound could circle the planet 8 million times. Now you know! Now before we finish, now we've talked about what molecular electronics is. And we've talked about how it works. What we haven't talked about is what can we use it for. Now, we have here a bunch of what we call modern and not so modern technology on display. And they all seem to serve our purpose well today in modern society. But with molecular electronics, we could push the limits way, way further. Now, look at this external hard drive. I mean, it's, it stores a terabyte of data, and that's a lot of bits and bytes that can go into this piece of metal. But with molecular electronics, this terabyte of data can go on the tip of a pinhead. That small, guys. Now, look at this camera. I mean, we'll, we'll always need a lens to this size or else it won't, you won't get high quality. That's just, that's just the nature. But 
With, with, with molecular electronics, we can reduce the rest of the bulk, the camera. We can make it as small and portable as we want. Take this phone. It's pretty nice, isn't it? But it's still pretty thick, relatively speaking. Imagine if you could get this phone woven into your sweater if you wanted. Whoa. And you'd make calls and go, Allo, Allo. <laughs> this computer is pretty old, and we have, much we have much newer computers now that are around this size, and they're still pretty, and with the same capabilities, right? But imagine if the computing power of a modern version of this could be the size of a coin, and someday it'll be just as cheap. Yes. That is the power of molecular electronics. So, as it seems, this piece of graphite is the future. In conclusion, molecular electronics is awesome. Kusam! Awesome. Imagine if you could have a computer woven into your shirt. Imagine if you could play a CLD while swimming underwater. Imagine if you had a pair of eyes storage sitting on a pin head And all of this can come from molecular electronics Cause molecular electronics is the wave of the future It's cheaper, simpler, and way cooler It'll make our lives better It's just a matter of time oh. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark, I think you're having too much fun. This physics is all color electronics. It's chemistry. There's still some problems left we have to solve them. But they're hard to make right now because of their focus scale. They're connected to the same system and it's our method, it's not the end. All we need is time. But it's alright, cause molecular electronics